Tetris Effect Connected is an upcoming release for the Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Windows 10 through the Microsoft Store, and has five unique multiplayer modes across three different categories. My name is David, aka a Game Scout, and I'm excited to be able to reveal for the first time some of the details about these different modes, as I think there's going to be some big implications for certain parts of the Tetris community. So for some context, this is an update to Tetris Effect, which was developed by Tetsuya Mizuguchi and the team at Enhance and Mon stars. Mizuguchi had wanted to do something with the Tetris property for a very long time, having become first hooked on the Sega arcade release of the game in his adolescent years. Towards the beginning of his career, he was particularly inspired by VR technology and the creative potential of combining music and visuals in gameplay, which is reflected in a lot of his early works such as the game Luminous. A decade and a half later, after finally getting the rights and years of production, he released his vision of Tetris in 2018. Called Tetris Effect, it did a lot to differentiate itself from previous iterations of the game. It introduced a brand new mechanic called the Zone, where you could get line clears much bigger than the standard four. But perhaps the core theme of the game, keeping in spirit with the psychological effect it's named after, is to provide an immersive experience and make Tetris as aesthetically pleasing to play as possible. Each of the levels has a distinct visual theme that interacts with the gameplay. When I first got to test it out in full VR at the Classic Tetris World Championships in 2018, I was really impressed impressed on a musical level how they incorporated the soundtrack into the gameplay. Through a combination of sound effects and musical chords, the player's piece movements and line clears actually directly contribute to the song playing in the background. Despite all of its features, there was one thing the original Tetris Effect didn't have. A multiplayer mode. At the time, it kind of made sense to me. With so many of the game's audiovisual aspects focused on being in sync with your board, I wasn't quite sure how they'd be able to make it work for a two-player mode. But over the following two years, multiplayer Tetris has had several landmark moments to launch it more into the public eye. Tetris 99 jumped into the scene in a battle royale format on the Nintendo Switch, and NES Tetris tournaments surged in popularity as a new generation of young players entered the scene. So now, after an additional year of development, the release of Tetris Effect Connect is finally around the corner. So here's a quick rundown of all the different multiplayer modes. The first is Classic Score Attack, which plays just like a match of the Classic Tetris World Championships. Each competitor is given a separate game that plays just like NES Tetris to try and get the highest score possible before topping out. Whoever has the highest score at the end wins. There's no garbage sending here, and aside from pushdown points, the only way to score is through singles, doubles, triples, and Tetris line clears. So on the surface, while this may be the most simple of all the modes, that doesn't necessarily mean the strategy is. Similar to any traditional race with a finish line, the challenge is to pace your aggression in scoring to be able to beat your opponent before the levels get too fast for you. For the average player, that's probably going to be around level 19, or if you're a pro, level 29. Notably, this is the first time there's ever been a faithful multiplayer recreation of NES Tetris, allowing players to be able to have matches under the CTWC format without needing to get all of the old school games are traditionally used in the scene. Next up is Score Attack. Here the rules are similar for determining who wins and loses, it's all about the score, but you've got modern guideline features such as additional wall kicks, ghost pieces, a longer lock delay, and bonus points for advanced moves like T-spins, combos, back-to-backs, and all clears. In this mode, level 30 is designed to be the limit for most, and 40 to be the final barrier of impossibility. The following mode is the Zone Battle, which makes full use of the flagship feature of the first version of the game. The way the zone works is, while you clear lines normally, your zone meter in the bottom left corner slowly fills up. When you choose to activate the zone, time comes to a halt, and whenever you clear a line, it moves to the bottom of the board. The time resumes when your zone charge ends or your next piece no longer fits on the board. The additional categories of line clears extend from the octatrice at 8 lines all the way up to an impossible atrice at a staggering 22 lines. In multiplayer zone mode, although you can still send garbage the normal way with all the standard attacks, the zone allows you to take things to the next level. Suddenly, even a measly single is at least somewhat valuable as it allows you to build up your zone charge. And the more lines you clear with the higher zone charge, the greater the bonus is for how much garbage you're going to send. It's a constant necessity to monitor what your opponent is doing with their zone and how much you've got coming your way in the receiving queue, requiring you to decide if you'll need to counter zone. The second to last category is connected. This is a next level version of the 
history mode from the original release where the game gave you surprise challenges such as giant Minos, tiny Minos, or the entire board flipping upside down. The designers really wanted to have a way for players not just to work against each other, but together as well. The connected mode introduces bosses that three players are able to fight against at the same time. There are many different bosses to defeat in order across the different skill levels, and they have a wide array of attacks, or blitzes, to send your way. Some of the easier ones do simple things like scrambling the board a little bit or taking away the hold piece, but as you move up, the blitzes get far more difficult to handle, such as not allowing rotations or adding blocks that have to be cleared twice before disappearing. But the players have a way to fight back. As they clear lines, the connected meter below them fills up, and when it's fully charged, they enter a special version of the zone, where time stops and all the matrices fuse together. Each player takes their turn dropping pieces into place, and special purple magic minos help aid the process along by pushing down any blocks below them until there are no gaps left. This launches attacks of white garbage that gets sent to the bottom of the boss's screen. When the boss tops out, it's been defeated. And finally, in a special version of connected mode that only goes live for a single day out of the week, a fourth player is able to play as the boss. When you're the boss, you have to strategize between attack and defense mode. You attack by filling up your blitz meter that sends out one of a few different blitzes, depending on what boss you're playing as. Switching to defense is the only way to clear away the white garbage sent by the other three players from the zone. As you play games across all these various modes, you unlock various guardian avatars and move ever closer to the mysterious Tetramidion at the center of the cosmos. I've had a lot of fun playing all the different modes, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what all the big names in Tetris are going to be able to do with this game once it comes out. Over the next two weeks, there will be some deep dive videos on several different modes, along with some special guests along the way. So I'll see you guys then. Tetris Effect Connected comes out on November 10th.